phenomenon, jackknifing, or as it's technically known, lateral buckling. Crash scientists at the Federal Railroad Authority conducted a test in April 2000 to examine the phenomenon. Two cars of conventional design were sent into a wall at 42 kilometers an hour. Most train collisions occur at these lower speeds. Upon impact, there was a jostling movement between the cars. The back car shifted slightly to the right and the front car to the left. Both cars derailed in the process. As the cars collide, they're already slightly misaligned and the energy of the impact makes them kick out even more. At higher speeds, when there's more energy involved, this movement is much more exaggerated and the cars zigzag out in different directions. The danger is rail cars will smack into each other side on and the weaker side walls will collapse inwards, crushing the passengers inside. Crash scientists already knew the horror this could result in. Crashes such as the one at Chase, Maryland, had provided them with grim examples. Could crush zones solve America's rail problem of lateral buckling as well? There was only one way to find out. The two test rail cars were once again sent into a wall at about 47 kilometers an hour. This time, they were equipped with specially designed crush zones. The difference was subtle, but significant. As the two cars collided, there was none of the sideways jostling seen before. Inside the crush zone, this is what is happening. The coupler which links the two cars retreats backwards, crushing in on itself. The energy is absorbed and the rail cars stay in line and on the track. The American testing program proved that adding crush zones and collapsible couplers to existing rail cars reduces the risk of lateral buckling. British and American crash science has developed methods of making old train designs safer. Another approach is to scrap the old design and start from scratch. This is what the French did 25 years ago with their launch of the TGV.